Hello again, it's now part three on my uh, quest to build a perfect rocket to the moon. And um, having done the math, we now know that this has to get into the transmunar injection orbit with a full tank or we are not going to be able to land on the moon. So uh, there's a number of options we can consider here. Now, one is we could actually just take this fuel tank, the large tank, and extend it. And on paper, that brings my Delta V up from 1975 to just under 3100. However, you have to realize that we're landing on the moon here, and that also works into the equation. It's not as simple as Delta V when you start fighting against gravity, because um, that reduces your acceleration, and you basically have to subtract the force of gravity from your acceleration when you're depend determining your delta v. So it will actually get you less than 3100. Another idea, um, which actually looks pretty good on paper, is if we, we get a separator in and we put a, another tank on here and we basically add a little uh, kicker stage. And you can actually use the tiniest rocket motor in the game, which according to this has a specific impulse and vacuum of 400. So when you do the math on this, then it adds, on its own, it adds, and I've got the numbers and I've written them down. Oh, there it is. Yes, I, it adds about 1,225 meters per second to my delta V, which brings the total delta V for this package up to 3,200. And since this is burned in space, then uh, it doesn't suffer as much of a penalty and this is lighter. So... This actually looks really good, and you, the only thing is you're adding one unit of mass compared to uh, adding a single tank here. So the rest of the rocket has to be bigger to get that into orbit. Now the third option is we just build a giant rocket underneath this. And so that's what I think I'm going to do. Now, I did the numbers, and I think, and we're going to test this right now, I think that based on the thrust of 1,200, we should be able to get three of these and this rocket. We should be able to make this move vertically. And so that's the first test, is just make sure that we have enough thrust. We pretty much, we're trying to make this look decent, so we don't want to make it so big. We don't want to have, like, um, we don't have big gaps and stuff like this. But there we go. Look, this does take off vertically. It's not the sprite list of rockets. But that's fine. We just need to know that this will counteract gravity once we get rid of everything else that is going to boost it. So what we can do is just take our test flight out, we'll cut the engines, and we'll separate everything. And then we can bring that back to the planet. And, uh, well, I um, hope nobody's standing on the launch pad. I mean, we tested what we needed to test. <laughs> Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. I love how this thing with the parachute falls faster than everything else. Oh! Right on top of the pad. Anyway. So, that can be our core. And we have this main engine, and we have three rockets. And so, the usual plan now is we are going to build a number of smaller rockets. Right Now, we have three meter parts. That means that we can use the eight times symmetry which we have never been able to use previously so let's try a uh, radial decouplers we're gonna build good old one meter parts on here let's see how this works try to get it right on the middle there oh, look we never never really had a, a place for the eight the times eight symmetry uh, unless you were using third-party mods so these are going to be the external boosters and fuel tanks, and they just need to carry their own weight while feeding fuel into the central engine. We're going to use a standard uh, radial feeder design here. So we can actually put... Um, we can put... Five or six even. Six on paper, because these... I believe the mass of these... 2.25 times... Um, Six will give me a mass of about uh, 16, and the mass, the thrust in this rocket is going to be 2 1. So this will still be able to hold its own against gravity. So if we just strap these on there, you know, I'd really like to use aerospikes, but uh, again, collision box just doesn't want to play. You can try placing these 
manually, but some of them will just not want to fit themselves. So you pretty much have to say, screw that, and just build a bunch of rockets. And for good measure, we could also use the solid boosters, because the solid boosters now have a thrust of 250. So those should be able to, those have more thrust than these rockets, which have 215. So we split these out underneath and put a rack of boosters under there. Oh my goodness, this is now starting to look pretty awesome. So we would have the boosters firing. We want our main stage to now come down here. Then these detach, fire this series of boosters. Then we can decouple these. And that's looking pretty good. Now, of course, we want to start feeding the fuel into the middle here. And we need to find our... Ah, where is it? It's, it's here. Ah, idiot. So we need to feed the fuel from these tanks, and it's kind of hard with these angles. We want to feed it into the central tank. And again, to avoid spinning issues, we want to try and get a strut on the other side so that it doesn't flex so much. Um, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Try again. We've got strut. There we go. So that holds there. Now let's come from this angle. We'll add a couple of struts to hold this in place. Strut. Strut. Struts are nice. They hold things together. There, we can also probably stop some wobbling against this rocket. Let's go from the top of these to these. We could, of course, add aerodynamic nose cones if we were really anal about how things should look. But I think this will be fine. Let's um, also add a string of struts around these to try and reduce any wobble. And a ring of struts around these. I think we have a moon rocket here. Oh, now the only thing is, yeah, let's... um. Let's add some external load-bearing structures to see, to help. Now for steering, steering's going to be kind of critical. And in space, you see, we already have the reaction control system. Um, but I'm trying to save as much of that for the, um, for the capsule as possible, because having budget left on your RCS will be good. But it will mean that we're steering this giant rocket with nothing else. Um, this main rocket does have thrust vectoring, so that should provide us enough control early on. As long as it's firing, this thing will turn relatively well. Once that stops firing, it will turn slower than an oil tanker. But yeah, I think we have a rocket. Let's try to see what happens if we can launch this thing to orbit. Because what if we can get this into orbit, then uh, we can figure out whether we have enough fuel budget to actually land it. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, you can see that they're all genuinely excited by the prospect of this. Let's ramp up our thrust. Start everything going. Are we ready? Three, two, one. Oh, wow, look at the wobble on that. Let's see. Oh, what happened? Okay. Yes! Well, uh, that didn't work quite so well. I think I need to work on my staging a little. <laughs> well, we could always try and get this thing into orbit without the... without the, the rest of the, the, the boosters. Look at how fast the fuel runs down in those tanks. Oh my goodness. We're picking up speed slowly. Jeb is quite happy with the situation, even though things did explode. Just gonna follow a standard orbital launch profile, although I have moved over slightly to avoid stuff falling on the, the pad after that previous incident. Apparently uh, somebody lost their lunch over it, so... <laughs> yeah, this it's not quite as fast as I'd like, but uh, we have a lot of thrust here. We have like eight engines, eight small engines, one big engine. So the mass of these little engines is 2115. Or the thrust of these little engines is 2150, and the last of the big the thrust of the big one is like 1200. So uh, yeah, that's uh, 1690 plus 1200 is is 28 2890 is the thrust in some magical carbon units. 
That would be a lot. I don't know, maybe we should try converting this to horsepower. That always impresses people. When you give these quotes and energies and stuff in horsepower. There's a great scene. I was watching a um, BBC TV series called uh, Race, Race for Space or something. It's four parts and it follows um, Korolev, Sergei Korolev and Werner von Braun who are basically the two the Russian and the American, German, whatever so, uh, rocket pioneers and how they you know, kind of raced each other to, to these goals and they didn't even realize it at the time. Like, Werner von Braun had, had no idea who Korolev was. He was, his, he was so important he was kept secret. It wasn't until he died that he was given a state funeral. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Now, oh my goodness, <coughs> this is now sluggish. Oh dear, 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 dear. I'm going to try and get this into an orbital profile now. Oh, how are we looking? 64, yeah, i got to really start banking this over. But, you know, we've now got a full set of tanks and we're basically going to just get ourselves into a, an orbit here and figure out if we have enough fuel to put us on a transmitter injection orbit. And if we haven't, we still have fuel to abort and return to Kerbin. Getting up some speed, getting up altitude. 86 kilometers, this is going so slowly. I tell you, this is this feels slow as it is, but as soon as I stop firing the rockets, it is going to be the lardiest assed rocket I've ever flown. Um, except for the one that I took to Minmus. Again, you were still firing at 100% so that we can verify this within the, the current um, game mechanic issues regarding uh, fuel usage. If we fired at anything less, we couldn't guarantee that this would be a reliable rocket in future versions. And I think we're going to cut our thrust now. And yeah, I'm I'm holding down the D key and you can see how slowly it starts to respond. This is going to be a lot of um, patience. But again, you know, as I said before, patience is rewarded in this game because if I really wanted to fly that um, kicker stage, it would have tiny thrust and tiny fuel consumption, but it would be the most efficient rocket. So if I had used the kicker, as an example, it would have taken a really long time to burn all the fuel, but it would have done so most efficiently. There, look at this. Bring okay, so if I start to fire up the engine a little more, yeah, now now I get some more more control once the engine actually starts firing. And this is really gonna be an issue. That's perhaps an argument for one of the other two options, because the maneuvering of the large rocket in space is really a chore. Okay, let's see, have we got ourselves, yeah, 77 by 123 kilometers. So now, let's find, let's find the moon. That's Minmus, we could probably get to Minmus, okay. Well, let's, uh, let's use our standard visual aid. Let's look for, let's orbit until we find the moon. How much fuel, yeah, we got a bit of a tank left. I think we might have enough to do this. Assuming we can actually point the rocket the right way to fire. Um, where is it? Where is the moon? We want to stop this as soon as possible because actually pointing us in the right way is going to take forever. Moon, moon, where are you? There's the sun. That's not the moon. Oh, no, that was just a lens flare I thought looked like the moon. It must be here some. must be coming up soon. There we go, there we go, okay. Oh man, we're pointing like completely the wrong way. Look, holding the S button. Um, I can turn on RCS, but it doesn't actually help me a great deal. Plus, you know, I really like to save that fuel. Oh dear. I mean, I guess I could put more RCS on the rest of the rocket. But then you come back to the problem about not having a nice fuel tank. Okay, I'm giving up on RCS for steering this. Uh, why is this turning so slowly? Okay, let's try going downwards instead. 
Oh dear. And in other news, <laughs> the astronauts missed the moon because they couldn't turn their rocket round in time. I'm almost tempted to fire up the rocket and like fire it retrograde for just a moment so that I can turn this thing a little faster. Oh, look at that. They are starting to turn with some speed. Good thing is that once we actually get it pointed the right way, when we fire up the motors, it'll just... Uh, Control. Wait, what the hell? It's it's stopping rotation on me. No, I'm losing the moon. No, it's it's rotating backwards now. What the deuce? I think the Kraken still exists, but in some weird form that nobody... Okay, let, let's fire up the rocket motor and see if I can turn it. Oh, come on, come on. Use that thrust vectoring to turn this thing. Yeah, I definitely think that I should have gone with the kicker design. Ah. See, there is an argument sometimes. Oh, come on, come on, come on. It's slowing down. I think there's some weird physics bug here that is stopping me from turning. I'm holding A and S. Let's turn on. Let's turn on. I'm holding A. I can rotate it this way fine. I'm basically saying, turn it. I'm holding the A button to turn, and it just sits there. Ah, oh, burning my RCS fuel. Thank you. I'm gonna aim a little high here, because you know what? We have to get this thing going. I'm gonna aim about 20 degrees above the horizon. I guess once I fire it up, Let's aim high and hope that I can get into a transmuner orbit quickly. Oh, man, what a trashy mess that is. Oh, shoot, no, pointing the wrong way here. There we go. Getting ready to cut those motors. Okay, haha, <laughs> and we're pointing the right way. And we have, oh, look at that. So, yeah, we are on a Minmus orbit, uh, sorry, Minmus, we are on a Mooner injection orbit, and we know that there, in theory, is enough fuel in that lander to land us once we arrive. It would be nice to have more fuel left. We definitely wasted some because our staging was screwed up and we basically lost fuel uh, when we were stuck to the launch pad and burning all those boosters. But that's, you know... It's not an entirely unsuccessful mission. Um, unfortunately, I think we, we definitely need a little more work on the orbital maneuvering here since that thing is, is practically impossible to fly. We need either more RCS tanks and therefore more RCS thrusters because I don't want to burn all that capsule fuel just to steer this rocket. I just don't see any place to put them. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go with the kicker design, maybe. Because, you know, adding more stages is always cool. See you next time. Fly safe.